So here's what you're seeing. That's pretty cool. And then This is an Epsanus Tau, also known as an Oyster Toadfish, an Oyster Cracker, Ugly Toad, Super Bic, and Bar Dog. Epsanus Tau is the scientific name. You use it for obvious reasons. There's a lot of common names. They grow to a maximum of about 38 centimeters, which is about 15 inches. They're commonly found to be about 8 to 10 inches long. Uh, the guys that you see in the video, we found them in a, a goby habitat trap, and we took them into the lab to see what they look like under the scope. The father and the eggs were returned safely to the water once we finished filming and uh, they actually hatched, we saw them. We picked up the traps and saw them hatch, so that's good. So these guys are pretty cool, you could see the heartbeat and you could see the blood, actually the red blood cells moving in the veins and the magnification is about 40x, so 40 times magnif magnification on the microscope. Oyster toadfish are sound producing fish that make a foghorn sound and uh, the males use this to attract females during mating season which is from April through October. They make this sound with the muscles that are attached to the swim bladder and these are the best known muscles found in vertebrates. So the female hears this sound and it locates the male. The male is in its nest and the female then lays the eggs in the nest and leaves. So the male stays, fertilizes the eggs and then the eggs hatch in about a month. And this whole time the male's protecting the nest. Unlike most fish, these fish don't lay that many eggs. You can see this, this clamshell, this is a surf clamshell that these are in. Probably about, I don't know, 100, 150 eggs. A lot of fish, they lay thousands to millions of eggs. So after about a month, they hatch. The young oyster toadfish, they attach to the yolk for about two weeks, two, three weeks and then the yolk becomes completely used and absorbed and at that time the oyster toadfish learns how to swim. These eggs are the largest eggs of any Chesapeake Bay species. The cool thing about oyster toadfish is that they can live in really poor conditions so the water doesn't have to be clean, like there doesn't have to be high dissolved oxygen, um, the salinity doesn't have to be perfect and they'll survive and they don't need that much food to survive so they could survive in, in times of of uh, poor water conditions and low food amount. Let's put these guys back with the, the father. It's not the mother. <laughs> there you go, buddy. This is the Epsanus Tau about 12 days later. Still has the yolk sac, still growing off of that. You can see the eyes are developed. He's breathing through gills now, instead of diffusion. He is mobile, he's able to swim around. Not very well, because you can still see the yolk sac underneath. Fish is about one centimeter in length. Oyster toadfish live on the bottom. Uh, they live on muddy bottoms and a lot of times the muddy bottoms have this self, a shell structure so uh, they'll have clam shells or oyster shells they use their camouflage and they lie motionless on the bottom and they ambush their prey so uh, unsuspecting crab or fish swims up and uh, it'll swim right up to its mouth because it has really good camouflage and they'll just quickly ambush their prey and eat it they have really strong jaw jaws to crush their prey so they eat different things. They eat uh, crustaceans such as crabs, and they could crush the crab shell very easily. They eat mollusks such as clams, oysters, and mussels, and they could crush the shells of those. Uh, they'll eat squid and they'll eat minnows and small fish. They're found from Maine to the Caribbean. Along our coasts, they're usually coastal fishes. They, they're uh, normally inside the bays, inside the marshes, not normally found outside in the ocean. And uh, a cool thing is NASA used these fish because they're really hardy and they have, uh, since they're sound producing, they have very large otoliths which are an inner ear and NASA wanted to see um, the effects of microgravity in space. So very little gravity. They want to see how these otoliths formed, if there's any uh, difference in structure between otoliths formed with uh, zero gravity in space 
compared to, you know, on Earth where we have gravity. And they didn't find anything significantly different, which is uh, pretty interesting.